All right, y'all, so now that we've looked at the various so-called black nations that descended from Epiphus, which, if you haven't figured it out already, is an indicator that Epiphus himself was a so-called black man, let's lastly look at the other nations who descended from his daughters, most notably his daughter Libya and the nation of people who were known as the Dark Libyans, or according to Hesiod, were known as the Dark Libyans. So as I stated earlier, the land, the land known as Libya in, in the northwestern region of Africa is considered the birthplace of the Berbers who were who are more popularly known as the Moors and they were one of the most essential and even influential ethnic groups that existed during the medieval time period and were responsible for events like such like such as the Crusades that lasted for almost a thousand years or so and they established and presided over one of the biggest empires during the during the um, Middle Ages of the medieval time period known as the Umayyad Caliphate um, so they were definitely a very significant group of people, which is the genesis of why they are so heavily disputed over when it comes to what race, what, when it comes to what their race was or what they looked like exactly. Okay, so but as I already stated, my stance was that they were indeed originally so-called black people, and I'm and I'm going to go about proving that in much greater detail when I do my series on the Moors, but. Just for the sake of this video, and because the topic is related directly to the main subject of this video series, which is Epiphys, I'm going to very um, briefly go over some things to prove that the Moors were indeed black people. Alright, so the first thing I want to take a look at in regards to the Moors is the word that the term Moor derives from. Um, so now some of you brothers and sisters who are watching this video may already know the etymological origin of the term Moor, but for the ones that don't know, the word more is said to derive from the Latin word moras, which simply just means black. But where the word more actually derives from is the ancient Greek word moros, which also means black or dark. And it was one of the words that the ancient Greeks used to describe peoples of color, mainly so-called black or negroid peoples from the northern regions of Africa. All right, so but let's just take a look at the exact definition of what the term morose means as well as the term more and how it was used to describe the people who would apply to during the medieval time period so now let's get a rundown on where the term more comes from so let's read this okay so more comes from the greek word morose plural mori meaning black or very dark which in latin became moro plural mori the latin word for black was not moro but niger or fusco for very dark so yeah, the term fuscus or fusco was an ancient Latin term that meant brown or dark and even black. But as we can see, the the ancient Greek word morose is where we get the term is where we get the term more from. And we're going to take a look at what the term morose means in greater detail in a minute. But before we do that, let's take a look at another source that will give us the etymology of more. So now this is a dictionary definition of the term more. And it's going to give us a better understanding of the word's origins as well as its relation to the Greek word morose. So now let's read. So now more from Latin morus, Greek morose, or more, probably from Greek morose, black or dark colored. All right, so we see here that once again, the term morose means black as well as dark colored. And then when you read on, it states that the Romans referred to the land where the Moors dwelt as Mortania which meant the land of the dark complexion people. All right, so remember that as we move forward, but let's take a look at another dictionary definition of the word more. All right, so now let's read this second dictionary definition of the word more. So more, more is an inhabitant of the eastern part of Africa, from Greek moros, moorish, black. All right, so once again, we see that the term more means black, and then even moorish, which was a word that was used when talking about a person who resembled a quote-unquote more i.e. a so-called black person. Um, especially during the medieval time period, that term Moorish would be used to describe a person who resembled somebody who was a quote-unquote Moor. Okay, like for example, Henry II of France, who was the son of Francis I of France, was described as being quote-unquote Moorish or looking um, slightly quote-unquote Moorish. And the reason for that is because Henry II of France, like his father Francis I of France, were so-called black men. Okay, but that will be another. But that will be a, a completely different video series for another day. But let's look at one last definition of the term "more." All right, so this is going to be the last uh, dictionary definition of the word "more," 
And um, this is just once again going to give us a better understanding of the etymological origin of the word more, as well as how it was applied to people during the medieval time period, which once again was the time period where the people who were referred to as quote unquote Moors ruled a lot of um, areas in Europe, like Spain and Portugal. All right, but let's read this real quick. So North African Berber, one of the race dwelling in Barbary, late 14th century from Old French Moor, from medieval Latin Morus, from Latin Morus, inhabitant of Mauritania, uh, Roman Northwest Africa, a region now corresponding to northern Algeria and Morocco, from Greek Moros, perhaps a native name or else cognate with Moros, black. All right, so as we can see, once again, the term Moros is defined as black or quote unquote black. All right, so the word more was basically a word that was meant to indicate a so-called black person um, as we would call them today. But let's just confirm that by uh, reading the second paragraph right here. So also applied to the Arabic conquerors of Spain being a dark people in relation to Europeans. Their name in the, medieval, in the Middle Ages was a synonym for Negro, later 16th century to 17th century. All right, so once again, as I've already stated, the word more was indeed a word that was used to indicate someone who was so-called black or a so-called black person. Just as it states right here, the term more during the Middle Ages, i.e. the time period when the Muslim Moors ruled certain parts of ruled certain parts of Europe like Spain and Portugal. And then I also believe they ruled certain parts of Sicily as well. That word was just another term was just another word for Negro. OK, and you know what? Even shortly after the medieval time period, the term more was used as a synonym for Negro by Shakespeare in plays like Othello, where Othello was referred to as a quote unquote more. And then you have the play Titus Adronicus in which the antagonist in which the antagonist was named Aaron the Moor. Right. He was depicted as a so-called black man in that play. And then even in the play Merchant of Venice, one of the main characters who was the Prince of Morocco, which for those of you who don't know, was another place where the so-called Moors came from in North Africa. He was depicted as a so-called black man in that play as well. All right, so let's just look at one last piece of written evidence to confirm that a Moor was a so-called black person. So now this is going to be the last piece of written evidence of the Moors being so-called black because uh, we are going to take a look at some images that will only confirm that the Moors were in fact so-called black people or black African people, whatever you want to call them. But let's take a look at this excerpt from a play that was written by a woman named Elizabeth Carey. Um, who was a 17th century poet and um, a dramatist as well as an English Vista Countess who became the first woman to publish an original play in the English language known as The Tragedy of Miriam, which is the play that I'm going to cite from right now. But I just wanted to pull f what I wanted to pull from this play comes from the footnotes that were added by the editor starting at In England. So now let's read. So in England, at least the conflation of blacks and moors encapsulated in the word black or moor probably dated back to the 14th century Mandeville's Travels. So I just wanted to pause here real quick and say that this uh, Mandeville's Travels that's mentioned right here was a book that was written by a man by the name of Sir John Mandeville, who was a 14th century supposed knight whose um, existence is questioned. But his works such as this, such as this one right here that's being cited, aren't questioned as being historically accurate. But the point is, he or at the very least, the book that he wrote was written around the 14th century, which was right around the medieval time period. Okay, so now let's. So now it goes on to say, um, which described the inhabitants of Mortania Moors as black. All right, so Sir John of Mandeville described the inhabitants of Mortania as being black, i.e., Negroes. Now remember the earlier dictionary definition that I cited from, that stated the Moors cre that stated that the Romans created the word Mortania, which quite literally meant the land of the dark complexion people. Right. Well, now we have a greater understanding as to why that was or why that word was created for the inhabitants of Mortania. OK. And it was because the people of Mortania were so-called black people. And then when we read on, it talks about Gowers. It talks about Gowers Confessio Amantis, which was a Middle English poem written by a man by the name of John Gower. And we see that the and we see the date that it was written in, which was uh, 1390 which once again was right in line with the medieval time period. It states that the term more was used by John Gower as a synonym for Negro. All right. So now didn't we already see this when I cited the etymology.com definition of the term more and how it was used as a synonym for Negro during the medieval time period, which was around the same time period that the Muslim Moors ruled in Europe. 
All right, so now this should be enough to confirm that the Moors were indeed so-called black people. And when I do my actual series on the Moors, I will go over these two or those two pieces of literature in far more detail. And I will even cite all the times that, that, the, that the term Moor was used as a term to mean a so-called black person. All right, but now let's just look at, let's just look at a few depictions of the Moors. So now this first image is of a so-called black Saracen. Um, the word Saracen during the medieval time period was just another word for a Muslim, particularly a Muslim Moor, which is what this person is in the photo. Um, he's a Moor. And there, are, and there are a lot of depictions just like this that you can find of so-called black uh, Saracen knights or black um, Moorish Muslim knights. All right, so but this, this is our first picture of a black Muslim Moor. So now let's just look at another one. Uh, this is the Moorish Saracen King Agolots and his army of Moors attacking a castle in France. And once again, we see the Moors being represented as black people or so-called black people. And those uh, bandana slash scarf looking things on their head were a headdress that the Moors would wear frequently all throughout their existence in medieval, in medieval Europe. And there are a bevy of manuscripts that depict the, the Moors and the Saracens as um, so-called black people with these types of headdresses on. Okay, so so uh, but pictures like this are just the tip of the iceberg of what I'm going to show when I do my individual series on the Moors. But let's look at it. Let's look at a couple more images of the Moors. Okay, so now this is an image provided by the brother who runs the RealHistory.com website. Uh, shout out to him. But this image shows the Moors defending their castle against Charlemagne and his army. Now the brother who I got this image from um, alleges that the Moors who are in the castle are actually part of Charlemagne's retinue of knights. And this image is actually showing the so-called Moors allowing Charlemagne into their castle. Um, as you can see in the picture, the gate to the castle is open to seemingly let to, to seemingly let um, Charlemagne and his soldiers inside the building. But uh, this picture will be interpreted later in another video series that I do on the Holy Roman Empire. But once again, we see a group of so-called black people that are that were allegedly Moors or were referred to as Moors, indicating that the Moors were indeed so-called black. All right, so now let's look at one last picture to cap it off. All right, so lastly, this is one of the more famous pictures that depict black Moors playing chess. Uh, this, I believe, are a coalition of noblemen in the Moorish community. Um, as we can see, there is what looks like a servant that this Moor on the far left is talking to um, who's serving them something. So these are most likely noblemen. All right, so but now that we've seen what the so-called Moors look like and understand at the very least to some degree, why they were called Moors or Morose, i.e. black peoples, um, it, should, it should make more sense why the Libyans who sprung forth from, from Epiphus by way of his daughter, who once again was the namesake of the land in northwestern Africa known as Libya, were, so, were called the quote-unquote dark Libyans by Hesiod. And as I stated earlier, they were sometimes referred to straight up as the black Libyans in some translations. So just to wrap things up, we see that Epiphus, who was the son of Zeus and Io, was the forefather of multiple dark-skinned, really so-called black nations of people. From the dark or the black Libyans to the Ethiopians to the peoples of Southeastern Asia, Australia, India, and a bevy of other ethnic groups that are classified as being Negro or Negrito peoples. All right, but Epiphus's influence doesn't stop there because he was also the forefather of many Greek mythological kings of Egypt, like uh, Belus, through his daughter Libya. Um, Egyptus, Egyptus was another one who was the son of Belus, um, who was the king of Egypt. And then you also have um, Danaeus, who was a very essential character in ancient Greek history. Um, him, along with another man who I'll mention in a little bit here, um, were very, very essential in ancient Greek history. But Danaeus, for those of you who don't know, was a forerunner to a group of people who, who would become known as the Danans, all right, which was just another name for the Achaeans who I've mentioned before, and I think my, uh, my Zeus video. But the Achaeans were one of the Hellenic tribes that inhabited Greece during the time period of the Hellens be, um, being the main inhabitants of ancient Greece. But like I said, that'll be that'll be another story for another day. But anyway, Belus was a so-called black man due to his birth from the daughter of Epiphus being Libya, um, who I already showed was the ancestor of the dark or the black Libyans, i.e. the Moors, who we just saw being represented as so-called black people. So if they were descendants of Libya and even Epiphus as they were as they were so-called black, of course, 
um, that would mean that she had to have been a black woman as well, especially when you look at the other nations that Epiphus was the antecedent of. All of those ethnic groups like the Pygmies and the Ethiopians, they were all black people, and even down to today, they're still so-called black people. All right, so it's obvious that any offspring of Epiphus had to be so-called black as well. So all of the descendants of Epiphus, especially the ones that were begotten by Libya, were so-called black from Belus to Egyptus to uh, Danaeus and then to Agenor. Now, Agenor was the Phoenician king of Tyre, and he was the father of Europa and uh, Cadmus along with a few others. But the significance of Europa and Cadmus is for number one, Europa is where is where the continent of Europe gets its namesake from. And then Cadmus was said to be the founder of the ancient Greek city of Thebes. And he was also the one who established the first alphabetical script in ancient Greece known as Linear B. So uh, he was the forefather of the Greek language. Um, technically, even though there was another Greek language that existed before it known as Linear A. But most historians um, don't really regard that as being the first Greek language since it's been deemed allegedly quote unquote indecipherable. But Cadmus along with Danaeus will be an, a main topic of focus when I do my series on the ancient Greeks because they reveal a lot about the ancient Greeks' um, actual origins. All right, and then lastly, there is the son of Libya known as Lelix, who was the forefather of the Leliges, who I mentioned in my last video about Zeus, um, and I stated that, and I stated in that video that they were the ancestors of the Spartans. Okay, so they too were also descendants of Epiphus through Libya. But all of those people, who, but all of those people were so-called black, just like the rest of the ethnic groups that derived from Epiphus. All right, so that's just going to conclude this series on black Greek mythology and the ancient Greeks in general until I do my independent video series on the ancient Greeks, and um, which is going to be a rather extensive series. But my next video series will be on the ancient Egyptians, where hopefully I will be able to put to bed the controversy over whether or not the ancient Egyptians were so-called black or not.